Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be diving into the matrix. Now that is the matrix section on the Behringer X32. Today, I'm gonna be showing you some practical examples of actually how to feed your sound system, your PA, through the matrix section and the reasons why we should be doing it. So if you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, the matrix section on the Behringer X32 is going to be very useful for us for feeding really anything. So we can feed recorders, we can feed our main PA. If we have a biamp PA, like an older PA that has a an high and a low, we can actually use the matrix section as our crossovers. So we don't have to have a system processor. So this is a really functional way of being able to feed a PA. So say you have a lobby that you need to sum your stereo mix to a mono and feed that lobby. Well, the matrix section is a perfect way to do that. But another example is say our PA is too bright. That said it has too much trouble. Now, the downside of having a too bright of a PA is your mix. If you plug in some headphones into the side of your X32, your mix is going to sound dark. And if you're feeding a stream with that mix, your mix on the stream is also going to be dark. So the way to fix that is by using the matrix section. And so there's a couple things that I want to show you here. Now, say I have a mix and I plug in my headphones and it sounds great, but then I go to listen to it in the room and it's too bright. Well, if we go to our left right bus and go and select our EQ and go and adjust the brightness of our overall mix down, so make it darker, what's gonna happen is it's gonna sound fine in room, but anything else we're feeding with this mixer is then going to be dark. So that's a bad thing that we don't wanna have happen. I wanna be able to plug in my headphones into any jack, any output of this, and have it sound great. So I wanna have it sound great in room, I wanna have it sound great on stream, headphones, etc. So what we can do is we can actually utilize the matrix section for feeding RPA and make that EQ adjustment on the matrix section rather than the left-right bus. That way we can keep our left-right bus nice and clean for feeding anything, and then we can do our tailoring to the EQ of the PA here on the matrix section. So let me go ahead and show you actually how to get this set up. So we have our right fader bank here. So we have group DCAs, we have mix bus one through eight, mix bus nine through 16, and then we have our matrix one through six and our mono. So this is my six matrix sections, mono, left, right. Now the matrix section is able to be fed by mix buses, our mono, and our left, right bus. So those are the only things that can feed this. We can't take a channel, so I couldn't take, for instance, my keyboard. I can't feed this keyboard directly to a matrix. I would have to send it through a mix bus first, and then I can select for sending to the matrix from this mix bus. So if I was wanting to send mix bus 10 to the matrix, what I would do is I'd go ahead and select bus 10. I'd then press view. And then on our LCD screen, we can see that we have all six matrix right here. So I can see the level going to all six of them. And if we go to the second layer, I can see my tap point for all of the sends to this matrix section. Likewise, if we go to our mono or our left right, we have the similar sends. Now, another thing that we can do is we can utilize the sends on fader to send to the matrix section. So what we can do is we can select our left right bus and then hit sends on fader. And now we can see that our left right is feeding into these matrix sections. So I can go ahead and turn this up to uh, zero there. Or I could go and select my mix bus 10 and I can turn it up here and turn it up there. So you can see that we can utilize our sends on fader. So now that we get our levels sent to that, I do want to talk more about the tap point here. So if we go to our second layer here, we can see that we have all of these selections. So we have input low cut, we have pre-EQ, we have post-EQ, pre-fader, 
and post fader. Now for sending to our matrix section, my recommendation is to have this set to post fader. That way, if I am pulling down the left right mains of my board, it is actually also affecting the send to my matrix section. So if I'm feeding my matrix one and two, and that's my PA feed, and I turn down my left right, if this is set to anything except post fader, when I adjust this, it's not going to adjust anything of what's being sent to matrix one and two. So that can be useful for you or detrimental for you. So I would suggest having that set to post fader unless you're doing some more advanced routing, and then you can get into the other tap points. But Behringer makes it really easy to see where these tap points are coming from. So we can see my little channel strip here. So we can have input low cut is before the insert point on pre. There is also a pre-EQ, which is after the insert point. We then have post-EQ, which is after the EQ. Pre-fader, which is after the dynamics. And then post-fader, which is after the main fader of the, our left-right bus here. So let's actually go ahead and get the set to sending out to our PA. So I have my matrix one here and my matrix two here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select them. And I'm going to press view in the configuration and preamp tab because I'm wanting to link these two together because I want this to be my stereo feed to my PA. So we have our left, right main PA here. So let's go ahead and label this. So we'll go to our name and icon and we can set this up. So now that we have these two named, let's go ahead and actually send our PA feed from our left right bus. So I'm going to go ahead and select my left right and I'm going to press view on the bus sends and I'm just going to turn this up until it gets to zero. And I'm going to double check that on my layer two it is post, which it is. And so now what we do is we can turn this back up to zero. And if I go ahead and get some audio playing through this, we will see that we have meters on our left right bus here. And we will see that we'll have meters in our matrix section here. So let's go ahead and press play. So we can see that I have meters here and metering here. Now, if my PA is too bright and I'm needing to adjust that EQ, what I can do is I can select my matrix section, go to my EQ and turn it on. And now I can utilize this EQ to go and make it darker. So for instance, let's go ahead and press some audio here. So we can hear this mix, but if I go and solo my matrix one and two, we will notice that it is a little darker. So that's my main left, right. And this is my matrix feed. Now this is only because I'm doing this EQ adjustment. Say it doesn't have enough bass and I wanted to make it more bassy, then we could go and do the other thing. Obviously this is not an EQ curve that I would apply to a PA, but this is good for showing you. So here is the left, right feed. And here is with the EQ curve feeding our PA. Now, the very last thing of after you implement sending our left, right feed into this matrix section is actually getting our routing set. So what we would need to do is we would need to go to our routing and go to our outputs and change the outputs of where it's coming from. So instead of having it being fed from the left, right bus, we'd want to have it fed from matrix one and two. So for instance, our default routing on the Behringer X32 has left on 15 and right on 16. But for instance, instance in this one, I'm just going to use 13 and 14. And so instead of it coming from main left and right, I'm going to pull it from matrix one and matrix two. So now my PA feed coming out of 13 and 14 is being sent from this matrix section. And the way that we have it set up with it being on a post fader send is if I turn this down or up, then it is going to adjust the overall feed sending to that PA. Now I do want to mention about being able to adjust the volume here on our matrix section is what we can do is we can now have our fader instead of a lot of churches I see out there having their fader down in like the negative 10 to negative five range, we can actually just turn this all the way up to zero and then apply that attenuation here on the main PA. Now this is going to be beneficial for sending your to your stream or record because we can keep our left right fader at a solid level 
level, so we can get a good unity gain level here in our meters, but we can send a little bit quieter to our main PA. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you. In my next video, I am going to be talking about how to get the matrix section of the Behringer X32 set up as your system processor for feeding, say, a left, right, plus sub, or a biamp, or even a triamp situation of your PA being sent from here rather than going through a system processor. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel or check out my website at drewbrashler.com. But additionally, if you do happen to have any questions or you have a suggestion of a video that you'd like me to make in the future, feel free to pop that in the comment section below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. But until then, thank you so much.